Hey, welcome back to Random American. And instead of axe content, uh, I'm working on the truck again. Because I broke it. Kind of. And then I added a whole lot more to myself that uh, I probably didn't really need to. And we're going to try and get it all done in just a few hours because I got other stuff to do. All right, well, as you can see, I got what looks like... Oh, it's bright out here. What well, looks like not too much stuff, but is actually going to be quite a lot, I think. Uh, so here's the rundown. <sighs> I was having an issue with this thing not uh, warming up hardly at all. It'd run like 130 degrees whenever I was going over 60 mile an hour or right at 60. And I started experimenting with putting cardboard in front of it because, well, back up. Before I put cardboard in front of the radiator, I did change the thermostat. First thing I did. After that, it warmed up just a little bit more, and it was the right thermostat. So I talked to a couple of people, and they said, well, it might be your uh, radiator is way too big because it's like four times the cooling capacity or some, something crazy like that. Um, I went and put some cardboard in front of it. That was working a lot better. It was actually coming up to temp mostly. And I was doing some sketchy stuff with the Bolins, pulling the 12 valve up the yard because that's the only way I could do it because my yard is a swamp and a hillside at the same time, which is not fun. And the truck was just sitting at the top of the hill idling a little bit and it overheated. And it has continued to overheat. I put a temp gun on my inlet and outlet hoses. My outlet hose is like 191, and my coolant temp was 135, and my inlet temp was 112, something like that. It was cooling it really well, and the fan wasn't kicking on. So if I drove it, it would cool down back to too cold, but just sitting and idling, it won't do it and the fan clutch never kicks on so i got a water pump i got a fan clutch the water pump came with a thermostat and a uh, thermostat housing neck uh, and then i decided to hell with it i'm going to go ahead and fix a bunch of other stuff on it that i've been wanting to do so i got my tensioner pulley because the one on it is pretty well junk it still works technically this wheel is not happy and the uh, the self-adjustment on it isn't exactly happy it's just better to do this than throw a belt and be stuck i uh, also got an idler pulley same reason that idler pulley moves very very freely but it sounds a little angry moving on from there i got a new fuel pressure gauge because the one the 20 dollar one that i had just stopped working it just reads zero psi and a little secret to that fuel pressure gauge if i had zero psi i wouldn't be running so you're wrong I went and got a glow shift because I'm going to do the rest of my gauges in glow shift in this tinted series. Uh, looking at this thing right off the bat, super nice. Uh, I was doing an oil change today anyways. If I didn't have the rest of this stuff to do, then I would have just done the oil change and we'd be restoring another axe right now. Whatever. Ain't a big deal. Moving on from there, I got more Evil Energy AN fittings. And I'm going to reroute my trans cooler lines like I was planning to forever ago. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep running it through the radiator or not. We'll figure that out whenever we get to it. I'd like to, but I don't know. It'll, it'll actually come down to how many fittings I got. Um, and I'm going to be moving my, not moving, I'm going to be adding my power steering cooler today because I think that really needs to be done. Uh, a guy that does a lot of swaps, he has a really nice lowered uh, square body with an LS in it. And he said he was running down the interstate two or three years ago with no power steering cooler. And his uh, power steering got so hot that it stopped working. Like He could turn, but he had no power steering, no power brakes. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Oh, as for the oil change. I'm doing AMS oil. This is their lowest grade. It's still advanced engine protection. I'm a big fan of uh, AMS oil. 
I have a Napa Gold filter, which is just a Wix. This one is a 1042. The Wix one is a 4102. Same thing. Uh, I got this one from Napa. They were doing a 40% off sale on all Napa Gold. So, snag that right up. And I don't know if we're going to actually get all this done today, but man, am I going to try. So, let's get over to the truck. Let's get some, some stuff drained. I'm probably going to do the oil change first. Then I'll do the uh, fuel pressure gauge. And then we'll tackle all of the coolant stuff. And while I have the coolant stuff out, I'll do the trans cooler lines. As long as I have the right connections to AN, I don't know. We'll have to figure that out. So enough talking. Let's get to it. Well, first impressions, I've got an oil leak somewhere. Didn't. Huh. That ain't good. I've got so much crap on the magnet that is not good. <laughs> okay. Might get an early rebuild. It also didn't get cleaned that well, so it could just be cleaning out all the past. That's what we're going to say. It's, it's self-cleaning. God, I hope so. Okay, so I'm going to try and catch you up in 10 seconds or less. Keep time if you're uh, willing. Uh, jacked the front of the truck up, got the rest of the oil drained out, tried to get some stuff out with a rag, greased all of my uh, steering joints and blew a grease circ off of one and put it back. Okay, here we go. Let's get the oil filter off. Ooh, that's not good either. It's brown. Okay, so we're going to revisit this. I'm probably going to throw an extra couple of filters on every... I might do a filter every 500 miles. We'll see. I didn't lose any oil pressure, though. I had fucking awesome oil pressure. There we go. Get that drain as much of that nasty stuff out of there as we can. Doing an oil change on diesel. This only has 461 miles on it. So that's good. At some point, probably not today, I'm gonna wrap my exhaust. It, well, just from like right here back to where it wise together. Because my floor, I'll put a picture of it up here. The floor of the truck was 137 degrees. And then later behind the throttle was 150. I actually cooked morel mushrooms by accident having them on the floor. So we'll do that because I already have the insulation stuff for this. And then uh, the floor will be getting insulated. There are no questions about that. Let's go ahead and put my filter on. Yeah, we are pre-filling it. Make me feel good. Give me the warm and fuzzies. And I'm going to take the time to fill this until it just won't take anymore. Okay, so it takes roughly 10 ounces. Now, I'm using this. Don't go overboard with it, okay? Just doing it because this is a crappy location and I don't want to buy the socket. Okay. So write the date and the mileage on your filter. I'm going to go find a paint marker and do that right now after I pull some of this stuff out from underneath here. All right, so the only thing I'm doing any different than uh, any, than some other people is I'm using Pro Lube. I'm going to do two ounces per quart, and I'm going to use my old AMS oil bottle. Bring it up to 12 ounces, pour that in. Other than that, just spilling oil in it. All right, well, let's see. It's got oil in it. Oh, there we go. But 
that makes me feel much gooder. Okay, shut it off before I uh, have to work into the cooling system. Okay, so let's go ahead and get the radiator out, the water pump out, and I don't know, some other stuff up front. Uh, you watched me put it in, pulling out the same thing, but I'm gonna go ahead and get that ripped out real quick, and we're gonna take a look and see maybe why all that was going on, and we'll get into the running the other stuff. So I'm gonna try and actually do something smart for once. I'm gonna see if I can get that off, my fan, <clears throat> while the belt is still on there. And I, I don't know. Cause if not, it's gonna take a pipe wrench and a big crescent wrench and it's gonna suck. So let's just, let's see. I don't know. I'm gonna get a crescent wrench and a hammer and we'll see what we can make happen. Alrighty, so got the water pump out, got the radiator out. I have a new idler pulley on. Ha dang, that is a brand new water tray pump and tensioner. The thermostat is already in here. Uh, these bolts I had to use off the old one. Uh, one of them pulled part of a thread out of the other water pump, so that was fun. I also anesthesize these, all of them. They go into aluminum because they're going to seize in there. You don't want that. Uh, how I got the other one off, the other uh, fan clutch off, is I just put a uh, pipe wrench on this. Ooh, you can see teeth marks. And then just turned it with my crescent wrench. It's a standard thread, so righty tighty, lefty loosey. And it came right off. Uh, I'm going to flush the. Oh man, this wind is terrible. I'm going to flush the radiator out with a hose real quick just just to make sure you know already here may as well so i'll get it flushed out and i don't know we'll start on the trans cooler coming up well surprise i uh didn't have the right fitting so i went and bought a oil cooler i have it self tapered in with the old bracket and zip tied Since I can't do AN fittings right now, I'll just have the uh, rubber line coming off of here, and I'm going to run it over to the original line here. I don't like doing it, but that's what we're doing today, because I'm sick of working on this. Then, I got this line down here that originally came up, and I'm just going to put a piece of rubber line in between those two, and we're going to call that good. So that will be trans cooler done. At least it won't rub any more holes in it. It was about to. Then I'm going to go ahead and set the radiator back in here. Maybe fix that a little. Fixed. Uh, no, I'll, I'll put the water pump in. Then the radiator. <laughs> we're, we're getting there. And we'll... Oh, there's another. I need that. Perfect. I can take a zip tie out and use this. And we're getting there. Okay, so... Things escalated quickly, and I had a family emergency, so I just went ahead and buttoned everything else up. But I'll bring you on in here and show you where we're at and show you what's going on. So we have the water pump in fully. We have the air intake on fully. Uh, I've been driving it around. It has not overheated. I'll show you a video of that here in just a second. But the transmission hasn't quit, so apparently it's cooling enough. But I figured I'd wrap this video up. Uh, the next one, I'm going to go over how much th all of this cost. Doing the swap, everything, I'll break it all down. And go over that, tell you guys what a K10 swap costs, what it might cost you, what it definitely cost me. But we'll go ahead and wrap this up. Uh, I will see you guys on the next one, and hopefully it turns out better than this one. Have a good one.